Hey everyone, you're watching VS Bronza243. Today we are doing a book reading video. And no, it's not part of your world. It's a new book. A new book. Well, for you guys. It, uh, this book is actually kind of old for me. But since I'm reading this out loud, the copyright is 2011. Sorry, I shouldn't have made that face. <laughs> oh boy, I need a drink. Alright, well, I am going to read the description of Leatherby Adventurers off in space once more. And remember, this is just a description for the entire series. Oh wait, no. For this book. Never mind. <laughs> Leatherby Adventures, Off in Space. A start for orphans living with their grandfather for the first time. A brother and sister discover their last legal guardian lives in a special mansion. The mansion has been in their family for generations. When their grandfather leaves for the afternoon, the brother and sister discover just how special Leatherby Mansion is. Hey, I finally said that right! <laughs> so... Here we go! It's your turn, sis! Someone says, his arms entwine around her thighs as his feet step on hers, trying to get on her lap. His sister groans in pain as he climbs up. She gi- oh, he giggles. <laughs> you are getting too big to sit on my lap, she tells him. She smiles. The brother grins as he places one thumb in his mouth and the pointer finger oh sorry the brother grins as he places one thumb in his mouth the pointer finger is arched over his around his pudgy nose which is like his father's the other hand is holding something wrinkly and old parts of it have torn slashes he pulls it up to his chest and tries to hug his sister as she rolls her eyes playfully. She giggles. You're also getting too big to suck on your thumb, she says, knowing full well she couldn't get him to part with the small sheep either. Come, come on, he whines. You know it's your turn. She laughs. All right, all right, calm down, she says. She starts to think. Let's see. How about once upon a time? No, I don't want that kind of beginning. Something else, please. She grins. All right, how about once, long, long ago, a young animal who... No, he protests again. I don't like that one. She rolls her eyes playfully once more. There was once a young boy. She stops suddenly and looks at her brother. He looks at her eagerly. She grins. There was once a young boy who had everything he wanted. He had a sister who was quite older than him. The brother and sister were alone. They had no one to care for them. Many of their aunts and uncles were too busy to be responsible for the brother and sister. Their grandfather was too old to take care of them. Their grandmother was already in a nursing home. Their other grandfather, their other grandfather though, was able to take responsibility. Now he was quite an adventure for the brother and sister. I bet he's kind of like our grandfather, the young brother says. Am I right? She looks at him. I don't know, 
I'll have to continue the story. If you want to hear more. Her little brother nods earnestly. Um, Grandfather Leatherby was an odd sort. The elderly man would often go about his business and show off his... Oh, now I remember. Grandfather Leatherby was an odd sort. The elderly man would often go about his business and show off his big toy projects to young children at hospitals or orphanages. He could also turn the other cheek and make children go to bed, or brush their teeth, or obey the person in charge. Sometimes the man was really cross, and made it hard on children. He even made some kids cry. One day, Grandfather Leatherby heard knocking on his front door of his big house. He stood up from his big, comfortable chair picked up his cane, and walked to the front door. The grandfather opened the door. He saw a middle-aged, plump man standing in front of him. The man had small eyes and mustache too big for his little thin lips and chubby arms and legs. He was carrying a leather briefcase. Grandfather Leatherby thought this man would stand out no matter what kind of crowd he was in. That was when he spotted two kids in the background. One was a boy who was short for his age. The boy was only ten, and he was three feet tall. He had blue eyes, beautiful brown curly hair, and light brown skin. The boy had a small suitcase with him. The other child was a girl. She was only fifteen years old and five foot and three inches tall. The girl was quite beautiful in her light blue dress, the only dress she had, and it made her ocean blue eyes even and it made her ocean blue eyes more beautiful in her round face. She had light brown straight hair. Her white skin glowed with a hint of light brown or what seemed to be a suntan. Uh, the boy and girl stared at... The boy and girl stared at a tall man with brownish-gray hair, who was Grandfather Leatherby. He was quite scrawny. The grandfather looked at the, looked at the boy and girl, and then looked at the plump man. Can I help you, sir? Grandfather Leatherby said. He had a clear, deep accent, like a British. You are Mr. Leatherby, I presume? The plump man asked. The grandfather nodded. You presume correctly. What is your name? He replied. Oh, right, um, I am Mr. Fowler, the legal representation of these children. I am sorry to say I believe you are their last relative I have contacted to care for them. Grandfather Leatherby coughed for a brief moment. <coughs> oh, sorry. Bad example. Grandfather Leatherby coughed for, coughed for a brief moment. <coughs> of course, he mumbled. Come right in, Mr. Fowler. You too, kids. Come, come. I do not want you three to catch a cold in this weather. He told the three people, standing outside the breezy wind, blowing snow everywhere. Thank you, Mr. Leatherby, Mr. Fowler said as he and the kids entered the grandfather's house. I am grateful that you are willing to do this. You see, Danny and Guinevere have become quite attached if you hadn't agreed to become their legal guardian, they would have been separated to go to age-coordinated schools, or orphanages. I understand, Grandfather Leatherby said. Oh, replied, as I said before on the telephone, I don't know if it will last for long. If this weather keeps going as it is now, I won't be able to go out and chop 
I won't be able to go out and chop wood for the fireplace or furnace. He spaced out for a second. My apologies, Mr. Fowler. Let me show you three to the living room so we can sit. He led them to a room where it was nice and cozy. Mr. Fowler, Danny, and Guinevere entered the living room. The man sat down in a big fluffy chair that was designed with floral fabric. The chair was close enough to the fireplace. Danny and Guinevere sat down in a long couch, which was just a few feet away as well as which was just a few feet as away as well as facing Grandfather Lullaby's big, comfortable chair. Uh, his chair was fluffy, but also rectangular looking. Between his chair and the couch, there was a medium-sized table that was only two feet high. As Mr. Leatherby sat down in his big chair, and as Mr. Leatherby sat down in his big chair and placed his cane next to it, Mr. Fowler looked at the fireplace. The fire was burning low, giving just enough heat. Although the cold, oh, sorry. The fire was burning low, giving just enough heat. Although the cold from outside started to come through the walls, s sending shivers throughout everybody's body. He and Guinevere looked out one of Mr. Lumpy's windows. The wind was blowing harder, swirling, falling snow all around. Mr. Le Mr. Lutherby, would you like to get to know your grandkids before signing, or do you want to sign now? He asked the elderly man. Looking at them now, I am already glad I met Danny and Guinevere. They will enjoy staying in this house, Mr. Leatherby replied. He looked at the two children longer. I have lived here since I was your age, Danny. There is quite some magic in this house. You two will find out soon enough. Danny looked at him with eager eyes. Grandfather Leatherby giggled with a twinkle in his eye. Then he looked at Mr. Fowler. I'd like to sign now. Mr. Fowler placed his leathery briefcase on the table and opened it. He pulled out some papers and a pen. Grandfather Leatherby stood up and walked toward. Grandfather Leatherby stood up and walked toward him with his cane. Sign here, here, and here, he said, showing him each page. Mr. Leatherby looked at him after he finished signing and sighed. Danny and Guinevere could hear his sigh. I'm grateful you agreed to meet here. My faithful friend decided to go out for the week to have an early Christmas with his family, Mr. Leatherby told him. Mr. Fowler nodded. Well, I should go then, he said. He looked at Dan he looked at Danny and Guinevere. You two have everything, correct? Mr. Fowler then looked around. Danny left his suitcase by the entrance to the living room. But, Gwen but Guinevere's pack was nowhere in sight. Guinevere, did you leave your pack in did you leave your bag in the car? She looked around and shook her head. I believe I left my pack outside. I'll get it, she said. Grandfather Leatherby took a quick breath, for her voice was beautiful. He thought her voice sounded just like her mother's, a clear, clean English accent. Then he caught his breath and stopped her. Do not worry. I shall make sure Lenore gets your pack, he told her. Lenore! Within a minute, a middle-aged woman with blonde hair entered the living room with Grace. Yes, Lord Leatherby, she said. Lenore also had a beautiful English voice. 
One of you left her pack outside the front door. Would you mind getting it, please? Then Mr. Leatherby remembered Mr. Fowler. Could you also escort Mr. Fowler to the door? He is ready to leave. He looked at the plump man who already had his leather beef who already had his leather briefcase in his hand. And that is where I stop. Um time check. Ooh, shoot. Sorry. Sorry for the hasty book dead goodbye, but I gotta go. This is the Esperanza two for three. Signing off.